One of the things why people don't read the Bible is because the Bible is true. And the Bible does not gloss over sin. The Bible will state to the fact that not if our Bible is of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and neither are able, will, lie. It's impossible for our God to lie. It is impossible for the Bible to lie. And yet, in the Holy Bible, we find lies. We find the devil speaking. And then today, I don't know what, it, it just came across me as I was reading it. We, that's me and you, don't tell the complete story. Now, it may be true, it may be stretched, but we, a lot of times, don't stress the entire story. And then we go running to the media, fake news, fake news, fake news. Well, maybe our, our telling of a story is a fake story, fake story, fake story. Now, Judges 19.22, and this man, he's married, his concubine, his wife went out and played the whore, and she runs off to her father's house, and he goes out and seeks her. And this is the book where it concludes where every man did that which is right in his own eye. And it's a book filled with just shame. Now, as they were making their hearts merry, behold, the men of the city, certain sons of Belial, wicked, gross, perverted, and we'll find out that they're sodomites, beset the house round about and beat at the door. And spake to the master of the house, the old man. Now this old man found this traveling man in his city as they're heading to the house of God. And the man's going to sleep in the street because no one would take him in. This old man coming home from the field brings this man, his wife, and his servant into his house. And, you know, before bedtime, they're talking, they're, they got some bread, and, and, you know, they're drinking wine, and, and they're having a good old time just talking. And these children of Belial step up to the house, and they're banging on the door. Bring forth the man that came into thy house, not the woman, the man, that we may know him. We want to have sex with that male. The men of the city, the males want to have sex with with the males. That happened back in Lot's day. Hey, we saw we saw some fresh meat come walking in your house. We want them to have sex with them. And the man, the master of the house, the old man went out unto them and said, Nay, my brother, nay, I pray you, do not so wickedly. So the Bible calls sodomy wicked. The old man called sodomy wicked. Seeing that this man has come into my house, do not this folly. It is foolishness that what you want to do. Behold, here is my daughter, a maiden. That's exactly what Lot did. And his concubine. Here's two females. They wanted the male. Then I will bring them out and humble ye them. And do with them what seemeth good unto you. But not unto this man. Do not of so vile a thing. Sodomy is a vile. Sodomy is wicked. Solomon is foolish. And foolish. But the men would not hearken him. So the man took his concubine. And brought her forth unto them. Now, now here's the strangers lodging. In the house. Hey, take my wife. Protect me. And they knew her and abused her all the night until the morning. So they did have relations with women. 
but they wanted the man. And when day began to spring, they let her go. Then came the woman in the dawn of the day, fell down at the door of the man's house, where her Lord was, till it was light. And her Lord rose up in the morning, opened the doors of the house, and went out to go his way. And behold, the woman, his concubine, was falling down at the door of the house, and her hands were upon the threshold. Almost like Dagon. That will happen later on. He said unto her, Up, oh, let us be going. But none answered. Then the man took her up upon his ass, and the man rose up and got him unto his own place. When he was coming to the house, he took his wife and laid hold on his concubine and divided her all together with her bones and twelve pieces and sent her for all the coast of Israel. And it was so that all that saw it said, There is no such deed done nor seen from the day that the children of Israel came up out of the land of Egypt unto this day. Consider it. Take advice. Speak your mind. Okay. That was a rude awakening. That male, a part of a woman's body. That's something you find in the mystery books today or the television, the sitcoms. And verse chapter 20, verse 4, he's going to tell his story. And the Levite, the husband of the woman was, was slain, answered and said, I came unto Gibna that pertains to Benjamin. I am my concubine to lodge. Where's your servant? You had a servant. And the men of Gibeon rose against me and beset the house round about upon me by night. Where's the old man? Hmm. Now they are under the law. And he had the law working for him because what happened is true. But the law said out of mouth for two or three witness shall it be established. If that man had, had had said, hey, listen, my servant was there. I was there. And the old man that owned the house was there. There would be three witnesses. Now, I don't know why he did. He excluded his servant. And I don't know why he excluded the old man, but he did. The men of Gibeon rose up against me to sit the house round about upon me by night and thought to have slain me. No, they were thinking about having sex with you. They want to know him. Not kill him. They wanted to know him. Sex. And my concubine have they forced. Well, you gave her to them. I think I feel a sneeze coming. That she is dead. And I took my concubine and cut her in pieces and sent her throughout all the country and inheritance of Israel. For they have committed lewdness and folly in Israel. True. Now, I, again, I don't know why this man, he had a true story. It was factual. He left out two witnesses, and according to the law that they were under and in, it would help his testimony. That that that, that servant would say, "Hey, yeah, you know, we, we came, you know, we were going to. He was going to sleep in the streets." I told him, "Said, let's go to Jebusite. Let's go, you know, Jerusalem. Let's go." He's like, "No, no, 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 no. That's not our people." We're heading to the house of the Lord. And then they came into the city and they said, we'll lodge in the street because nobody would take us in. And I said, you know what would have happened if we were lodged in the street? <laughs> and then if he would have brought the old man say, you know, yeah, I was coming home from the field. I was working. I saw him there. I invited him to his house, my house. You know, we gave his ass for vendor and he had his concubine and he had his servant. Gave me a little brief you know, detail of what he was doing, where he was going, why maybe. And we just sat back. We had some bread. We had some, you know, wine. And we just talked about the good old days. 
the field or whatever. And the thing is, there would have been no reason of the guilt of the Levite, the husband, to not mention these two other witnesses. And yet, we tell people factual stories. I come across and will say, you know what happened at the farmer's market? Or we were at the grocery store, or we were at the doctor's office, or we went here, we went, and, and tell a factual story. And when it comes to the end of that factual story that God records, because he records, he's keeping a book of things that we do. There's a book in heaven, Stiley Hayward. And he records, okay, that's the story he told. It, it was true. And it was an old TV program, Cops. You know, the names of the innocent have, have been changed to protect the innocent, something like that. But in our stories, there are events that have been omitted, maybe just because we forgot. There have been information added to make the story more impress impressive. And both are wrong. And when we read this disgusting story of what happens here about sodomy, about a woman is chopped up in 12 pieces and mailed out, and we lose one important story is we don't always tell the whole story ourselves. Maybe he, for, maybe he forgot his servant. Maybe he forgot about the old man. I, I don't know how he could. Because it focused around or two. Maybe the old man told him, say, listen, I, I don't want to get involved with that. Because, you know, I live here. And if they find out that, you know, and that's reasonable, that happened. But when we look to our telling of stories, let me ask you a question. If we confess our, our sin, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Have we not ourselves telling stories? Lied. Stretched. Forgot something. Yes, we do. And as much as that story is in Judges 20, our stories Factual are written in, in a book and highlight, well, that's not really what happened. <laughs> or a dash, where's the mission detail? You condense the story. And when that man who's telling the story to the children of Israel is not the time to condense the story. He's almost like on a trial in a court. He's on the witness stand of what happened to him. And he didn't give no names of witnesses. And he knew who they were. I just thought it was ironic that we go pick on people in the Bible like that, and you know what? We do the same thing. That's why the Bible is not read by many. Because when we read the Bible, and I read that story in Judges 20, and I got thinking about myself. There's been some stories, I, whatever reason, I did not give all the information. And now I have told stories you know, I stretched it out to make it sound a little more better than it was or I thought it would be. And that's not true. That's not honest. That's not correct. That's not a good character. That's not Christ-like. 
And we need to confess our sins. 